Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag, where I just open my mail. No big ones left on the shelf. They're all just little tiny itty bitty ones. So, sorry for those who like big packages. This one's from uh, Silicon Labs in Norway. So, why do all my Norwegian viewers, Silicon Labs have sent stuff in before, haven't they? It's yet another demo board, I'm sure. Not that we don't like demo boards. Oh, look at the little gecko-y type thing. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. What do we got? Open box. Unwrap it. <laughs> these instructions. Connect the end of the white cable to your kit. Make sure the power switch is in USB position. Connect end of white cable to your smartphone. Push PB0. Push PB1 to change to low energy mode. Gee, thanks. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Is it another uh, gecko-y thing? It's another, it's a happy gecko. It's an EFM32 happy gecko. E happy. Let's check it out. And it's the happy gecko. Well, we've seen this many times before. How many sucks of the sav can they have? Fair dinkum. I don't know. Anyway, let's power the thing up. Got coin cell battery in there. Looks like we've got the uh, sharp memory uh, LCD on here again. Very cool. And um, so we're on USB mode here. It can be powered from battery USB. Uh, so let's switch it to battery and ta-da! Happy Gecko. Oh, HID keyboard device interface. Right, that's why they want to want you to hook it up to your phone. So let's, um, well, instead of the phone, let's plug this into the PC and see what we get. And yep, it installed no problems as an input device, so let's actually hit the button here and see what happens. No, that's low energy USB mode. So, hey, hey, hello, Silicon Labs. If I hold that down, Silicon something. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a fail there, but anyway, oh, you probably can't see that, sorry, yeah. There we go. Anyway, yep, Silicon Labs. So there you go. It's just a um, simple demo of um, how to do a um, HID keyboard interface. So I presume they've got all the sample code and everything else. Cool. I'll link it in down below. Check out the Happy Gecko. We've got one from China. I do all my Chinese viewers. If you can get past the firewall, beauty. Um, <laughs> the Great Firewall of uh, China. Somebody is just... Um, sent this and it's got a quite a disturbing description on the back. It says adult supplies mm. Let's check it out. Um, I have no idea who it's from a lot of people just uh, order stuff on eBay and get them shipped to me What do we got? <laughs> what is it a USB? butt plug vibrator thing Fantastic. Thanks. Just what I always wanted and it's pink so, yeah, wow, sorry, terribly exciting. Looks like it's a USB vibrator. Why? Like, like, get a proper battery powered one. Why would you plug it into the USB? I mean, geez, well, yeah, okay, maybe it's convenient when you're sitting there surfing your porn, perhaps, but, geez, I don't know, fail. Well, I plugged it in, did absolutely nothing. Zip, nada. And if it is a USB vibrator, I reckon it's just a, like, it wouldn't be any circuitry in there. It'd just be motor hooked up to the, straight onto the 5 volt rail. <laughs> no, it's not a vibrator. What the hell is this thing? I'm sorry, my um, knowledge of the adult toy industry is obviously not up to scratch. What, it, what is it? Something that, does it, what does it do? Does it heat up? I don't know. We've got this cloth material. With the 5 volt rail directly wired onto two conductive copper strips with some sort of cloth which is presumably some sort of conductive thing? I don't know, what is, what is it? So let's measure this thing. What I'll do is I'll just probe straight through the plastic and, hello, seven and a half ohms. So yeah, it's some sort of conductive cloth, some sort of heating element or something. I don't know. What's the deal? I don't know. I don't know. Some sort of butt warmer? Pussy warmer? I got no idea. Well, 
in any case, it's a fail because if you plug it into a standard 500 milliamp protected uh, USB port, it's going to overload the thing because it's going to take like, you know, well, you know, assuming that it's like uh, the instantaneous, uh, d like the DC resistance, as soon as you power it up, it's going to overload. It's going to take like 660 milliamps instead of 500. So what the... Bloody hell. I don't know. It could, like, you know, the resistance could go up. Could have a uh, temperature coefficient, of course. It likely does in some respect, but you, I don't know. So, yeah, I just plugged it back in again to a uh, high-powered port, and sure enough, yep, it warms up. Um, you know, it's going to uh, dissipate a, a few watts. So, like, yeah, okay. I don't know. Please explain the value of this. All right, I wanted to get educated, and I just <laughs> Googled this. Be careful what you Google for, of course. Um, it's a hole warmer for fake vaginas, fake butts. It warms them up, makes them realistic. <clears throat> Who knew? Okay, big industry, probably. It actually reminds me of this documentary I saw. I don't know, it might have been like a year ago or something. I was just flicking through the uh, on the idiot box and I was captivated by this uh, documentary. It was about, I think, some um, American family, small American family company who uh, have this, real, this nascent industry making um, masks uh, for... Uh, men who like to dress up as, as like, real women. It makes them look like real women and, like, have, like, like the, these skins. They call themselves maskers, and it was absolutely fascinating. I had no idea such a thing existed. Anyway, it just, oh, suddenly, that popped in there. Hmm. Next up, we have a second suck of the sav from Schmartboard, or is it third or fourth suck of the sav? Anyway, I don't know. Let's have a look what Nick has sent in. And wow, this one has been sitting here for some time, January 2015. Oops, sorry. We've got some smart board. What are they? They're a smart patch. Not smart patch, smart patch. Let's check them out. And thanks, Smartboard, for sending these in. I always love getting uh, little uh, little boards and jumpers and stuff like this. Always handy to have in the kit box. So let's take a look at these. Now these puppies here are called smart patches and it looks like just a regular adapter uh, like this. Of course you actually cut these off, there's uh, four on the same uh, strip here, oh, pattern, pending, all that sort of rubbish. What's unusual about these is that they're, look, they're actually flexible adhesive sheets. So they're designed to uh, stick, in this case, an SO8 package uh, IC actually stick that package down to a board and just attach wires to it nicely even you know repair modify a PCB or something like that that's actually quite neat takes up a lot of room because you've got the um, got the large pads over here to connect to but you can solder your SO8 on there and then just um, solder and then you've got larger pads to solder your jumper or mod wires onto rather neat now, in case you're wondering, no, they're not actually conductive on the bottom. It looks like they are. I've just peeled it off. But uh, there's an adhesive layer there which you can't actually um, get through. I put my sharp pros through there and I wasn't able to make contact. And they've got a whole bunch of these. They've got like a four pack for SO, um, 0805s, uh, so, uh, SOD 323s and uh, other uh, diode, you know, diode packages and uh, stuff like that. And then they've got ones for uh, more surface mount stuff for different uh, 1608, 2010, your larger, um, you know, your tantalum type uh, cases, your uh, BCD and all that sort of jazz. And then we've got some for uh, 1206 case A and some more sod packages. So that is real. Oh, there we go. That's an SC70. So if you've got one of those little pain in the ass SC70 packages, there you go. Stick it on, solder it onto this thing. And then adhesive that onto your board. And then you've got these larger contacts, which are fanned out there to mod onto. Wow. That's really quite neat. Worth having a couple of these packs in the kit, I think. Definitely. Thank you very much, Smartboard. Hopefully they'll come into uh, uh, their own in a repair video in the future or some sort of mod video. Awesome. And they show an example of how uh, you could use a smart patch to repair, say, a uh, blown ass, like you've, you know, lost a pad here, you know, or you, you know, damaged your, during desolder and it's burnt to a crisp or something like that. So you just uh, cut it off and uh, whack it in here and then just join up 
some mod wire and just join up bridging wires across there and solder your cap in. It's as I said, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit big, but you could actually trim it down uh, to size as well. So you know, it's not a bad thing at all. I mean, you know, that looks a bit huge in how you're doing, but um, yeah, you could trim it down right to the right size. You don't need all the extra stuff on there. You can just trim it like right around there, for example, and then just uh, like if you want to scrape some of the board off uh, down in there. I don't have my poker. Yes, I do. Here it is. So, you know, if I was to do this really neat, I wouldn't have done it like that. I'd just make, you know, cut it, trim it right around there like that, and maybe just, uh, you know, scrape off some of the uh, solder mask in there and just lay that tape down and Bob's your uncle. Maybe, you know, some on this side as well and then just bridge that over. Would have been a bit neater, but yeah, quite flexible little things. I like them. And then we've got a, what's called a four-way bus jumper a wire. And it looks like just some wires, but no. Look, check it out. If we have a look, there you go. They allow you to, whoop, there you go. When you have to common up two different uh, things, so they're joined in there like that, and then they've got both the uh, male and female headers at each end. Awesome, how handy will those come in? Once again, well worth having in the kit. Smartboard have really got a whole bunch of useful uh, prototyping products. It's almost if, you know, if you, may, uh, do they sell them on DigiKey or something like that? Next time you're whacking in an order and you go, oh, I want to throw some extra stuff on there. <laughs> well worth throwing like interesting little things like this. Fantastic. Oh, you're going to come in real handy. So an immediate uh, example use of this that uh, jumped to mind is you, of course, uh, use these for, say, a logic analyzer and a scope at the same time. You know, you plug in the one cable and then you've got two coming out that you can actually connect to um, easily, something like that, or whenever you have to join, um, uh, you know, two signals together. Brilliant. Or, you know, tap off two signals off the one point. Very handy. If you don't have them, you don't have them. You've got to make it or bodge it up somehow. Another second suck of the sav from uh, Max Chan. He's um, sent some stuff in before. Be careful when opening. And by the way, very nice penmanship, Max. Big thumbs up. A lot of people's uh, handwriting is not very legible. So be careful when opening. Pointing to there. Okay, well, yeah, I'll be careful. It's all right. I'm an Australian. Know what I'm doing? Not sure why we need to be careful. No, nope. just got some boards. No, nope. don't have to be careful at all. Greetings from Shanghai, from Max. I've been to Shanghai. I've been shanghai in Shanghai for a, <laughs> was it a week or two? Um, yeah, got off the plane in Shanghai. My first time in Shanghai, got off the plane, got the bus from the airport to the uh, city, hopped off, couldn't see five meters in front of me for the smog. Oh, horrendous. Anyway, I don't know how anyone lives there. <gasps> Goodness. Anyway, Shanghai. I had fun there, though. It's good. All right. Let's have a look at these things. And if you remember before, Max actually uh, sent in a little uh, USB to serial adapter, and he goes on to say that he actually um, sold them out after I uh, did them on the video. So fantastic. And he's been um, he's released a new Rev 3.1 with a few uh, tidy up issues and uh, things like that. So uh, I'll link that one in down below. And he's also sent in a few failed uh, projects that, um, well, yeah, didn't cut the mustard. Hmm. And he actually tried to do a Rev 2 of this board using a um, PCB contact uh, thing where, you, you know, you just uh, plug this uh, straight in like some of the, you know, slimline USB keys and things like that use. And uh, apparently he didn't have uh, too much luck at all. <laughs> he couldn't get it working. Yeah, you're definitely not going to get it working with a solder bunch. You really need a nice hard gold uh, coating on there. And um, I believe 1.6 millimeters um, board will do the trick, but I could be slightly off on that. Maybe you need a slightly unique uh, thickness, perhaps. And he says he has this AT Tiny 85 micro uh, light dimmer, or uh, uh, yeah, 240 volt mains dimmer, and he wants to know if it was safe or not. Well, I don't know. First look, you're looking at, uh, ooh, that's a bit close. That's a bit how you're doing. Look at that. We should have routed that straight around here, get some clearance. Um, what's the standard, I don't know, eight millimeters clearance or something between, 
um, those, but yeah, granted, it's the uh, neutral, and in a men's system, um, uh, neutral is tied back to earth, but you can't rely on that fact, so you've got to have your clearance in there, so just that alone is, uh, nope, I wouldn't rely on that one um, at all, I mean, you know, it's, it's probably going to work, but no, it's not good uh, design practice, and without seeing the uh, rest of the circuit, I'm not sure, but you know, yeah, you've got decent clearance on your transformer, uh, we've got ourselves the uh, opto coupler there. Oh, apart from that, it probably would have done the business. Next up, one from the old Dart. Don't get many from the old Dart. Um, a Cook. So thank you very much, A. Let's see what A has sent in. I think this one's been here for a while, so sorry about that. Oh, we've got <laughs> 3D printed Space Invaders. Check them out. Ta-da! All different. Lively colors. Let's say what hey Andrew. I've been uh, watching your vids for a number of years. Excellent work. Keep it up And Andrew thought he'd send me some space invaders because mine turned out terrible. God, I remember that. That was a long time ago It's, pro it's probably been sitting here for that long. So <laughs> sorry, Andrew um, and um, Yeah, it's the nicely printed space invaders printed on a uh, MakerBot replicator Awesome. Sagan can play space invaders. Once again, another one sent by, like, um, unknown, uh, you know, person through eBay or whatever, um, from China. And I know it's in here, and I hope it's, well, I've already done a video on this, so I'm not sure. It's a proper anesthetic wrist strap. Thank you. Um, what am I supposed to do with a proper, this is a proper one, it's not one of those bogus wireless ones which I busted. Um, a Leco brand. Not exactly, uh, not exactly the best. Not exactly the best of, yeah, yeah, that's not exactly, uh, not exactly terrific, but you know, it's going to do the job if it's got a one meg resistor in there, eh, it'll, you know, kind of, sort of works until it breaks. I love the specs. Look at this. Electro scatter in time. 0.1 seconds. <laughs> That's terrific. <laughs> suitable for use clean rooms. Not in clean rooms, just suitable for use clean rooms. Rinsing resisting. It resists rinsing, apparently. Adjust at will. <laughs> That's terrific stuff. And the current limiting resistor is an IM ohm. IM ohm, not 1 meg ohm. Fantastic. I think we got one from Italy. Posti Italiani. I, th I, I think it is Italian. So hi to all my Italian viewers. I've been to Italy. Awesome. I'd love to go back to Italy. They make great gelato and crap pizza. Go figure. <laughs> What's in here? Um... Yes, seriously, the, like, hmm. the, um, yeah, the pizza in Italy is just, like, a piece of stiff cardboard with some sauce on top. That's their whole idea. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Angelo and Ricardo. G'day, Angelo and Ricardo. Greetings from Italy. Inside this mailbag, you'll find a tiny board. I did. We called it the Pick for Boot to interface USB PIC devices to a PC using a um, 18F2550 with bootloader. Hope you enjoy it. Let's check it out. So what the guys have got here is just a uh, PIC uh, 18F2550 with a uh, custom bootloader on it that allows you to hook it up to a PC and then uh, experiment with it. Of course, you could jump a stuff in there and uh, wire it off to your heart's content. It's going to be fairly quick if I can read that. That looks like, uh, is that 20? 20 meg, yep. <laughs> it's got 20.05 on there. I don't know what the, is that 05? 20.05? Or is that 20.0 and then 50k or something? I don't know. That's a bit unusual. Anyway, um, yeah, just a little um, USB interface board if you want to experiment with uh, picks and USB stuff. I'll link it in down below. Thanks, guys.